Uh, I just recorded this rebuild for, I don't know, two and a half hours, something in that neighborhood. And, uh, two things happened. One, the recording just fucking randomly stopped at 57 minutes. Lord knows why. And also, when I listened back to it, um, the audio was screwed, so I guess it's kind of like... I screwed up in both ways, so I wasted all that time, but also... I don't have to scrap a whole video, I would've had to redo a lot of it anyway. So we're just redoing the full thing. Dallas Cowboys coming up next. All right guys, so as I briefly touched on in that, that intro of just absolute anger, uh, we are doing the Dallas Cowboys here today. It was highly requested. And be sure to leave down in the comments section below which team I should rebuild next. I'm gonna kind of bounce around this year unlike I did last year because uh, I think it's a little bit more fun that way. We get more of a taste. It. We're not just going from all the way bottom to all the way top in terms from worst to first. Um, but a few things you should know before we get into it. One, Twitter is linked down in the description below as well as my place to buy merch if you're interested in that. You know, a lot of you won't be. It's so whatever. If you want some, it's there. Not whatever. Twitter, I'm very active on there. But this is a fantasy style rebuild. It is very unlike the realistic rebuilds uh, that I also have on this channel. If you're into that, I know a lot of people are. Um, there is a playlist for that on my channel. For realistic moves only, we really go over the top in terms of realism and nothing that we wouldn't think happened uh, in real life. But for the fantasy style rebuilds, it's completely different. Anything goes. The best way to get to the playoffs, because Madden Sim really, really hates me in this game, you just got to build the best team possible. And whether it's trading or going through the draft, we're going to do it by any means necessary. we got a pretty good team. It's all about getting younger and getting better. So guys like Jason Witten might not make it to the end of this video on the Dallas Cowboys. Whether he retires or whether he gets traded, I don't know. But uh, let's go ahead and uh, get into this. Make some moves. Also, if you guys cared for the settings, I'm going to do a separate video um, on rebuild settings if you guys want those. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you're new for all that action. But uh, the skill level doesn't matter for trading or anything like that, or even simulation. All it is is when you're playing the games, and the reason we don't play any of the games is because you're trying to build the team up. I mean, that's all this is. A rebuild, we want to build up the team and see if they can do it, you know, on their own. Um, so, we're not playing the games. I'm confident I could beat the All Madden CPU 10 times out of 10, so we don't really worry about all that. And uh, just play with injury off because there's no sense in building a great team and then having injury get in the way of a successful record. So, that is that. And, um... I think that's pretty much going to do it for the settings for right now and uh, XP sliders and things like that coming up in another video as I said. But let's go ahead and get into it, break down this roster and again make some moves. That's what this is all about. And also I know a lot of people might say uh, the Dallas Cowboys don't need a rebuild but we're rebuilding every team. This is almost like more of a reloading not rebuilding if you ever heard that expression. Uh, and also Ryan Switzer in this game looks incredible. I don't know if you guys have seen the stats, but everything except awareness is great. And he has quick development. Ryan Switzer is going to play a lot. Like, I'm almost tempted to start him over Cole Beasley. Um, just so he gets as much time as possible. Maybe makes a Pro Bowl, gets a ton of XP. Because he could be literally phenomenal. I might end up doing that. I'm not sure. Because I didn't do that in the first time I did this. And he ended up being pretty sick. So imagine if I gave him all that more play time. But I'm going to act like that never happened. I'll be making similar trades, I would imagine. But uh, enough, enough talking about it. Let's do it. Let's find a safety. Let's find cornerbacks. I mean, Shadobi Awuzie's cool. Nolan Carroll has got to go. Jordan Lewis is kind of cool. I don't know what we're doing with him. Anthony Brown's got to stay. Orlando Skandrick, he's older, coming off injury. I don't really think I can work with a 30-year-old 83 overall cornerback in the long run. Just probably won't work. Jason Witten, too. I'm not really sure. But we're going to make moves that are the best for this franchise in simulation. And let's go ahead and make some of those. So I thought initially, um, the first time I did a rebuild in Madden 18 for the Browns, one of these fantasy-style rebuilds, of course, I thought trading was a little bit more difficult than last year. But it's almost, the more I play it, proving to be easier. And they need to really revamp this trade system going into Madden 19 because I like doing this. I like doing these fantasy style rebuilds. But this, you know, trades like these are just ridiculous. And I'm not not going to do it if, it if the game gives it to me. It's Orlando Scandrick, Justin Durant, and a third round pick for AJ Green. As if the offense could not get any better, we now add AJ Green into the mix. Absolutely phenomenal. 
Um, and it's about to get a whole lot worse for the Bengals in just a minute. And in the way it's gotten worse, we've acquired Tyler Eifert. It's the Jason Witten replacement. Better in overall. I think a better player right now anyways, regardless. Kyle Wilbur, a first round in extra, and T. Will. Terrence Williams gets it done. I think Terrence Williams has kind of fallen out of favor with Dallas Cowboy fans anyway. But uh, Tyler Eifert, very, very good replacement for Jason Witten. Happy to add him onto the team. Now, as much as I didn't necessarily want to trade Demarcus Lawrence, I feel like with the emergence of guys like Taco Charlton, hopefully, uh, through this rebuild, we won't need Demarcus Lawrence, and we have David Irving. We have guys that can play that position. You know, I don't necessarily think that we need him over the long run, so he's fine. Uh, Akeem Tlaib is a great addition to the team. Helps out the cornerbacks quite a bit. That group is going to be much improved now. I tried to go after Chris Harris, did not work. He to leave a little bit older, has a little bit worse value, so he's a little bit easier to trade for him. Steven Paya, Demarcus Lawrence, and a second next year gets it done. Now, I know what you guys might be thinking, right? Why do this trade at all? Why get Cordy Glenn when you have arguably the best offensive line of all time in this particular Dallas Cowboys team? Uh, because they had another really, really good group of offensive linemen uh, a little while back. But Robert Blanton, Nolan Carroll, the second, and a second round pick this year for Cordy Glenn. It's all part of the master plan. Just give me a second. Let me show you what's going on. It's all going to make sense in just a minute. With this trade, I'm trading Randy Gregory, Benson Mayoa, and Jordan Lewis for a first and a second round pick from the Arizona Cardinals. The second round pick is next year. And you guys are about to see uh, the master plan come into effect with the Arizona Cardinals. The master plan was the Honey Badger. We needed to acquire a player that they would have significant interest in, and Cordy Glenn fit that description. We also trade uh, two first round picks, which is quite a lot uh, for this to go through with Cordy Glenn. The Honey Badger is now a Dallas Cowboy. Being a gigantic New York Giants fan, get gigantic giant, near, whatever. Um, it sucks to, you know, really go and build the Cowboys and say we and stuff for the Cowboys, but I really got to take an unbiased perspective at this. I'm trying to do this. We're trying to make a fun video. We're trying to build the best team that we can and go on and do big things in the playoffs. And I think the Honey Badger is going to help us do just that. I have him, uh, playing at strong safety here in just a minute, even though he's really not a safety, you guys weren't aware. He plays nickel cornerback. This, uh, the Cardinals rock mainly a nickel setup and Tyre Matthew is that nickel cornerback and he's exceptional he does drop into deep coverage on occasion but he really excels in that nickel corner role but I think for the purpose um, of the Dallas Cowboys in this rebuild he's gonna play a fantastic strong safety he's got the speed he's got the coverage we just gotta boost that zone uh, and that tackle maybe Tyler Tyre Matthew is gonna be exceptional this is a very good looking team so far so you look at the team and really the only main issues that stand out are defensive end, but I think David Irving's fine. Uh, Taco Charlton is going to play right end, which means I'm probably going to move Tyrone Crawford just so he's, he's less of a, a hassle to deal with. We're going to move him to defensive tackle, and his overall probably will go up. I feel like he would fit better as a 4-3 DT, um, and uh, he does. 81 overall defensive tackle. Taco Charlton slides over to start at right end. And really, you look at this team and you say, what position do we need here? And it looks like outside linebacker. Jalen Smith has got to start at middle linebacker. He has quick development. There's no way he doesn't. So I'm going to move Anthony Hitchens to left outside linebacker, which will probably boost his overall up a little bit, I would guess. We're just playing a prototype. doesn't really matter too much. He's not going to play. I'll tell you who is going to play, though. Um, well, I can't. I actually don't know. I have no idea who I'm going to get yet. But uh, I want a linebacker. Probably cover with speed. You know, you think about Telvin Smith. You think about maybe Dayon Buchanan. I'll bring back Dayon. I don't know. Let's see what we can do. <laughs> Rip Jason Witten. One like equals one prayer. Go enjoy your career or the rest of it with the Jacksonville Jaguars. We know Julius Thomas has done so well. Telvin Smith, though, is the newest Dallas Cowboy. He's going to fit in really well. Says it doesn't fit the scheme, but that's just a straight lie. He fits in super, super well. That's the whole reason I went out and got him. A speed linebacker who can cover. Can he play? I guess he's going to play right outside linebacker. Sean Lee at left. I don't know. Um, we're going to move Wilson to middle linebacker number two, which probably will bring down his overall. 
but I think he's going to fit in well for us there. And uh, maybe 73, 74 overall, decent backup. 74 overall, I like what we're working with. We have significant needs on the defensive line still, I think. But overall, the team looks very improved. Got Tyler Eifert. We got A.J. Green. Um, rest of the offense didn't do anything, but we also got the Honey Badger. We got Aqib Tlaib. We got Telvin Smith. These trades have been very impactful so far, and they're only going to continue. Well, maybe not. I'm going to make more trades, but I don't know if they're going to continue to be as good. Hopefully. I mean, that's the goal, right? But the real goal is to improve this team. Ryan Switzer has got to play. Ryan Switzer, he, I'm starting him, dude. Like, he's playing he's playing the slot. Cole Beasley, like, who is Cole Beasley? We need Ryan Switzer. Ryan Switzer is the next Cole Beasley, the new Cole Beasley. Cole Beasley, you're 28. I want you to stay on the team just for, like, you know, he's a classic cowboy that I've kind of seen a lot of. He's just, you know, the under dog story just exemplified but he can't be on the team anymore i'm gonna get a first round pick bears for cole beasley you want it they really don't have an interest i'll trade picks back cole beasley a six and a third next year for the first round pick from the bears i love it dude like the trade system is so broken they gotta fix that for next year i know they're not gonna do it this year many of you think they might do a patch it just won't happen i really really would doubt it Ryan Switzer is the no, is the next Cole Beasley. He's coming in to play slot wide receiver. I love it, man. It's <laughs> he's gonna be so good. Just watch. Um, but I will see you guys at the midseason mark. Let's see how we're doing. Big thing, by the way. Some people will say, uh, "Hey, I, I want to make these trades go through." You got to get master trade negotiator. It it does wonders. I'm telling you, it has to. Like player progression is also super important because that's how you're gonna get tons of XP. Uh, it doesn't even matter about XP sliders. You need the coach packages. They're so influential. You got to get the coach XP. We're going to simulate now to the midseason mark. I forgot um, to show you guys that, so I, I did that then. I hope that answers a few questions. But I'm looking for a good record at the midseason mark. Somewhere around, you know, five, six wins would be would be pretty good. Hey, five, six wins. I'll take it. Tyler Eifert, as you can see, is a marquee free agent that we need to bring back. It's not really a big decision, Madden. Like, I need him back. He's a really big part of this team. Uh, Delvin Smith, David Irving, also all impending free agents. Keith Smith, want to bring back. Alfred Morris, I don't really care for. Anthony Hitchens will probably bring back as well. Let's go ahead and do that. Catch up with you guys afterwards. All right, David Irving's being a straight bitch, which is whatever. Uh, we got everybody else back, though. I also decided to go after Alfred Morris. We need a backup running back. Why not just keep him here in Dallas? We have 3,000 coach XP, and I will spend that. I don't think I'm going to touch any of the player XP right now. I just don't really care for it. We're going to get that increased player, uh, player weekly goal XP thing. That is extremely helpful. I'll maybe do a little bit of scouting. We're 5-2, and two, doing pretty well so far. Very tight race for, for the division here. Gi Giants are 2-5. and five. That... Come on, man. Just, there's no way that's going to happen. And maybe I'm a biased Giants fan, but there's no way the Giants start out 2-5 and five with the team that they have now. I'm going to go ahead and scout and see you guys at the playoffs. Because uh, I don't even know who I'm going to go after here. Like, if you look at end, look at defensive tackle, maybe a linebacker, but I kind of don't really care for one. Probably just defensive line. We didn't make the playoffs? Dude. This, this is what I'm telling you. Like, it's so screwed. Simulation just goes one way the first half of the season and then completely different the next. Usually, it's the first half of the season is just absolutely terrible. And then the second half, it's steamrolling. 7-8-1 and one, and missing out on the playoffs. That is... That's, that's so bad. Why? Dak Prescott, 4,400 yards, 34 touchdowns, 19 picks. I mean, that's a good reason why. He didn't perform. We're going to get him upgraded, though, in the next season. Ezekiel Elliott, nearly 1,300 yards, 11 TDs. Receiving, Des Bryant, 1,000 yards, 10 touchdowns. Tyler Eifert, 3 touchdowns, had a bunch of catches, though. AJ Green, over 1,000 yards, 10 touchdowns. Ryan Switzer, 786 yards, 6 TDs. Hopefully he made a Pro Bowl, man, as like a returner or something, because he's going to get that XP. Uh, QB sacks, kind of whatever. Tyron Smith, 145 tackles. Two tackles for loss for him is pretty cool. Uh, Cedric Thornton led the way with nine, though. Quarterback sacks, eight for Tyrone Crawford, six for Cedric Thornton. 
Interceptions, we have three from a number of players. Tyron Matthew, Jalen Smith, Akeem Tlaib, Telvin Smith, and Byron Jones. Uh, forced fumbles, we have two from Byron Jones that led the way. Fumble recoveries, number of players had one. And then any defensive touchdowns, one from the Honey Badger, Tyron Matthew. Yearly awards, Aaron Rodgers wins MVP of the 11-5 Packers. Uh, Drew Brees up there, the 6-10 and 10 Saints is an interesting one. Patriots go 10-5-1. That seems pretty legit. NFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Aaron Rodgers. Any Cowboys in there? No. Defense Player of the Year goes to B-Wags. Any Cowboys? No. Did I say Cowboys the first time? I don't feel like I did. Mitch Trubisky, or Trubisky wins Offensive Rookie of the Year. Any Cowboys? Yeah, Ryan Switzer in there at number 9. Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Ruben Foster. Taco Charlton in there at number 5. So it looks like we didn't get any awards. Hopefully we got a bunch of XP though. Uh, Dak has a decent bit, nothing insane. Ryan Switzer didn't make a Pro Bowl. He doesn't have a ton of XP like he did in my first run through of this, which you guys didn't see, so there's no real point in referencing that. Tyrone Crawford has a ton of XP. Probably gonna trade him though. Byron Jones, 42K. What about a Woozy? Shadobia Woozy doesn't have as much as I would like, but uh, I'll upgrade that in the off season. I still can't believe we missed out on the playoffs. I guess I'll just see you guys at the off season. All right, David Irving, enough fucking around. Like, I'll increase the years, I'll increase the salary. You're gonna re-sign. All right, David Irving has re-signed. Good. I was becoming a bother. Hopefully there's some beasts in free agency. I just missed out on Jonathan Cooper. I forgot that he started. Hopefully there's actually a decent player that I can plug in at left guard here. Um, bunch of old players. Antonio Gates, Drew Brees. Larry Fitzgerald. We got a retirement home up at the top of the top of the board there. Do we have any good left ends? No, left guards. John Greco could play left guards. John Greco is going to play left guard. That is exactly what's gonna happen. One year deal. Let's amp the money. Doesn't really matter on one year. John Greco, please come to Dallas. 98 points. Okay, I'm the only one bidding for him. Okay, we're, we're gonna tone that down like a lot. Alright, John Greco accepted. That is cool. Um, I kind of wish I hadn't gotten rid of Cole Beasley, but uh, we can always sign a different receiver. I just expected Cole Switzer to go off, or Ryan Switzer. Why did I say Cole? So, Cole Beasley, that's why. I'm very tired. <laughs> so we have the fifth overall pick in the draft, thanks to the Chicago Bears being a bunch of fucking idiots. But, um, my draft board, I have four players. I want all these guys. I really do. Here's the problem. I have one first round pick and then a fourth. I can't get all these guys unless I trade up, which is a thing that could happen. I might actually look to do that. First pick though is gonna be a major position of need with a major difference maker. Impact player, Paris Hawthorne. Does he have an interesting first? That's all we're gonna say. We're not gonna say that he's a gigolo or anything of that nature. Um, we're just going to say he's fast, decently strong, agile. He's got the top three skills. Paris Hawthorne yeah, is a monster. 79 overall, superstar development, of course, of course. 81 strength, 80 tackle, 80 block shot, 86 power move, uh, 76 speed, 83 acceleration. Paris Hawthorne is the real deal. 22 years old, out of Miami, 6'3", 294, ideal build, uh, build, ideal build. Jeez, Jessica Beal? I don't know. Ideal build for defensive tackle in a 4-3. Paris Hawthorne fits the bill. But I do have some other players that I want to get. The only way I can do that is to trade back up. And uh, I think that's what we're going to have to do. All right, so we've traded back up in the draft with Kadeem Edwards, a fourth this year and a second next year. I almost wonder if I gave up too much. But that trade seems fine to me. That happened in real life, I think, that we fleeced them. So I'm fine with that. I'm missing out on a guy that I wanted, a receiver. He probably got drafted there. He goes at number 17 to the Browns. But receiver wasn't the biggest position of need for me. It was the defensive ends. And we're between two in Vaughn Red Von Redman and Julius Iwoma. Now, this name is significantly harder to pronounce. pronounce. I can't even pronounce the word pronounce. I'm super tired. And then Vaughn Redman... He looks pretty good as well. I mean, they're both around the same. Didn't realize Julius was a 3-4 run stopper, so this really works out for the best. Vaughn Redman, welcome to the team. 
It's all we do. Superstar development. Uh, it's only 76 overall. He's going to come and start immediately, though. He has great power moves, great speed. It's all about upgrading play rec, and his awareness, I assume, is going to be quite low, as it is at a 56. He's going to be incredible once we upgrade him. So I am super happy with my decision to move up and draft him. That's going to be this draft. So I guess I'll see you guys for the start of season number two. So with Tyrone Crawford's Pro Bowl appearance, he actually got the addition of quick development. And some people are telling me the only way you get it is by upgrading it with points. But no, you can actually get it from Pro Bowl appearances, uh, season awards, as well as player of the week awards. But that actually increases his trade value. My defensive line's kind of weird. So I re-signed David Irving, and I really didn't need to, because I want to start Vaughn Redmond. That needs to happen. And I have Taco Charlton currently at right end. I moved him inside a defensive tackle just to see what his overall would be. It's not really that high, so I don't think I'm going to do that. I might end up just trading David Irving uh, and Tyrone Crawford and see if I can get a really good defensive tackle for both of them. With this trade, I'm trading Malik Collins and a fourth-round pick for a first-round pick from the Raiders, and I fully intend on... Uh, moving that first round pick to another team in return for another really, really good player. Not at the position that I thought it was going to be, but I saw him and I need him on the team right now. And that player is, of course, Darius Big Play Slay from the Detroit Lions. He is so awesome, and if he was ever on the Cowboys, I would shit my pants as a Giants fan. Uh, but thank God this is just a video game. And the secondary is looking really, really good. It, it looks really good, especially once I upgrade Byron Jones and take care of a bunch of things. I'm going to move Taco back to defensive end where he belongs. Again, I just wanted to check overall. Taco is not built for defensive tackle position. Maybe he puts on like 10 or 20 pounds uh, and develops some, some block shedding. He could do that. But right now, he's fine on the edge. And I do want a better defensive tackle. Cedric Thornton, I just don't want to work with at all. Cornerbacks are great. Like, that's perfect. I do not need cornerbacks for the rest of ever. 20 years from now, strap Jadobia, Woozy, and Paz. He's going out there. 60 years from now, Akeem Tlaib, get his respirator, get his wheelchair, stick him in coverage. I'm sure he can rip somebody's chain off. I don't know. Um, you know, I don't know what goes on in retirement homes. But let's go ahead and trade Cedric Thornton, maybe trade Anthony Hitchens. Are we trading Jeff Heath, the beast? Maybe. Um, Ryan Switzer is going absolutely nowhere. The team's good. The team is really good. Just, it's all a matter of, I actually gotta upgrade Thornton first, give him some uh, give him some value. But it's, it's all a matter of time now. It's all a matter of development. We're in the clear now. So it turns out right now Cedric Thornton is like really shitty. <laughs> if you if he went to the doctor, like that's what they would prescribe him, or they would say like diagnose him with just real shittiness. Cedric Thornton is fucking awful. And teams for the first time in this entire thing are using their heads and saying, yeah, Cedric Thornton, that guy, piece of shit. We don't want him. So I can't trade him, unfortunately. He's stuck on the team for right now. So I don't know if I can do anything. Like no one wants Demontre Moore because he's awful. Um, he had great potential, but never lived up to it due to uh, marijuana. I guess that's what they're saying. I don't know. Um, does anyone want Jeff Heath? You'd think every team in the league would. We don't really have many picks, but I guess we could leverage that. I want a defensive tackle. The only team that realizes Jeff Heath's potential is the Pittsburgh Steelers, the same team that only believes in drafting people uh, that may or may not look seriously deformed. I'm not going to say any names. Um, I'm just kidding, of course. Shazer's a beast. Josh Dobbs is... Josh Dobbs. Uh, ooh, Geno Atkins? Wait. Are we totally just going to fleece the Bengals this entire video? Yes. Yes! Mmm, that contract is delicious. 11.2 mil per year for Geno Atkins. That's going to be fun to pay off. However, it means one thing for sure, and that the team looks even sicker. With the development of our defensive end, with our LB core, our secondary is nice. As long as Dak continues to progress, we're golden. This is a golden team. 
I'm not even going to bother spending player XP. I'm not doing it. I'm going to use some coach XP, not touching player XP. All right, and of course, three and four at the midseason mark is realistic. I'll take that, though, Giants. Stop for the division. I'll take it easy. Uh, the reason I didn't end up spending coach XP is because I wanted to upgrade uh, quarterback player progression as that will improve Dak. And there's really no reason that I didn't spend the player XP other than to be a little rebel that I am. Um, I'm 6'3", I'm not that small in terms of height. Whatever. Um, I should spend this XP. I definitely should. 3 and 4. Like, it's not going to cut it. So this is the upgraded team, by the way. Figured I'd show you guys Dax at 90. Zeke's quickly approaching that 99 marker. Ryan Switzer quickly approaching that 199 overall marker. He's that good. Defensively, the safeties are nice. Yeah, I think it's safety to say. Looking pretty good. Sorry. Kill myself now. Byron Jones, 90 plus. Tyron Matthew, 90 plus. Um, in overall. Defensive line, improving Paris Hawthorne and Vaughn Redmond, both 81 overalls. Taco, up to an 83. Team's looking pretty good overall in just their second season. And, um... Usually simulations fucked for the first half of the season and then second part of the season like will win out or something uh, wild. So we'll see if we end up doing that, make the playoffs, win in the playoffs, and hopefully capture a Super Bowl trophy for the Cowboys as much as I thought I would never have to say that. No, we missed the playoffs. Cool. Glad. Glad. That's totally why I do these rebuilds so uh, we can go 7-9 and nine and miss the fucking playoffs. Great. Awesome. Dak killed it, other than throwing more than an interception per game. 4,700 yards, 46 TDs for him, 17 picks. Zeke did pretty well, 1,300 yards, 11 touchdowns. Alfred Morris, five touchdowns. Receiving three receivers over 1,000 yards. Dez, AJ Green, Ryan Switzer, all roughly about the same. Tyler Eifert, 800. Uh, Dez had eight touchdowns. AJ Green with 14. Ryan Switzer with seven. Tyler Eifert with nine. Blocking. Offensive line looks like they perform, perform pretty well. Sack numbers are never really correct or accurate in uh, in that screen. Tackles for loss, 16 from Geno Atkins, who made one hell of a debut with the Dallas Cowboys. Ten and a half sacks. 11 from Taco Charlton. 8 from Paris Hawthorne, the rookie. 5 from Vaughn Redman. Hopefully one of them took home Defensive Rookie of the Year honors. Six interceptions for Aqib Tlaib. Four for both Tyre Matthew and Darius Big play Slay, Honey Badger and Slay going off. Force fumbles, three for Jalen Smith. He also led our team with three recoveries as he did. He also had a defensive touchdown. So did it keep to leave though with Jalen Smith for player of the year. Defensive player of the year, Jalen Smith. Matt Ryan wins MVP, Dak at number five. Show me NFC offense player of the year, Dak's at number three. What about defensive player of the year? Mark Barron on what planet? Jake Ryan, Barkevius Mingo, this is a lie. Where are you, where is Jalen Smith? Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Jabbar Bullet. No Cowboys, Defensive Rookie of the Year. We have Paris Hawthorne and Vaughn Redman. Damn, dude, we didn't win anything. The XP is not going to be there. We missed out on the playoffs. I hate Sim so much. I do. We do have some coach XP, though. That is going to help. I'm going to spend that... I usually don't show this, but I figure, you know, why not? Let's do defensive line, and LB and DB can come at a different different time. Got to get those linebackers up, though, in terms of Jalen Smith, and, of course, the defensive line in terms of Taco, Vaughn Redman, Paris Hawthorne. Why did I not do the... Did I do the D-line? I hope I did. I totally forgot. 15K from Hawthorne, 11 from Redman in terms of thousands of XP 11k from Jalen Smith offensively Dax at 20k Ryan Switzer at 8k he's gonna be close to an 80 let's go ahead and go to the offseason though and uh, bring in some big free agents to help push this team into the playoffs and this is a playoff team I think all of us can agree that's a playoff team so was last year and didn't make the playoffs once we need to address offensive line in free agency Potentially receiver in defense uh, terms, not terms, but in defensively, in def on the defense. Thank you, idiot. Um, I'm fine. I don't really want to take anybody. Got to re-sign Zach Martin though first. 
And Byron Jones. And Geno Atkins. Okay, cool. Zach Martin returns. And um, should be able to get Byron Jones and Geno Atkins very easily. And we do. We have just under 12 mil to spend in free agency. Does Joe Thomas want to come and play some guard? You're damn right he does. He doesn't have a fucking choice. I just started cursing a lot out of nowhere, but I guess my parents must not be home because that's a thing. So, um, it's whatever. 94 points. Should be able to land Joe Thomas. He's playing guard. Actually, no, he's not. Lyle Collins is playing guard. So this is the team uh, that should hopefully lead us to the playoffs here in year number three, I guess it is now. Wow. Um... Sean Lee has progress, or excuse me, de uh, regressed slightly, which is unfortunate. But the rest of the team is looking pretty good. Paris Hawthorne, 84 overall. Top of Charlton, 85. Von Redmond, 83 overall. Safeties continue to improve. Darius Big Play Slay is now the number one corner. That's good as the key to leave goes down. Ryan Switzer remains the best player on the entirety of the team. Uh, next to Jeff Heath, that is. But it's overall, I think, actually a pretty good team. Not going to worry about scouting. Like, we have no one to draft. If you guys see my draft picks, I mean, I have a seventh round pick. There's there's no one there that's going to help me out other than the, uh, the pick I already have. So we're just going to simulate to the next season. And I think we're going to do very well. All right. Season three squad. You saw the team. Now we got to get the dream. And then we'll be off the scene. Let's go. Simulate to the midseason mark. I'm dropping a diss track on Jerome PKR. He's a bitch. Link in the description. We are 7-1 and one at the midseason mark. Killing the division. Which means we'll probably finish somewhere around 7-9. and 8-8. Eight and eight. Should be around there. Got almost 4,000 coach XP to deal with. Which is never a bad thing. And that means we can use that to address the issue of the linebackers and the defensive backs. Not progressing quite as fast as I may have wanted. Although we do have some player XP to spend. Dak, namely. Ryan Switzer could never be good enough. Or what, could never not be good enough? I don't know. Uh, 20k XP from Paris Hawthorne. 14k from Vaughn Redman. Team is looking nice. I'm going to use this XP. Superstar development is a beautiful thing. And um, like Jeff Heath, who is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Let's use this XP. The rest I'm of, uh, other than Dak and the two rookies, I'm going to let the CPU handle it, and we're going to head in to the playoffs with a full head of steam. All right. We had 14-2. and two. Simulation did not bend me over and did not perform unspeakable actions. Dak Prescott, nearly 5,000 yards, 45 touchdowns, 11 interceptions, rushing Ezekiel Elliott, nearly 1,600 yards, 15 touchdowns. Alfred Morris had seven on the ground as well. Des Bryant, 100 catches. Uh, 1,200 yards, 11 TDs, 1,200 yards for A.J. Green, 13 touchdowns. Tyler Eifert, 6 touchdowns, 861 yards. Ryan Twitter, almost 900 yards. He did get double-digit touchdowns, though, with 10. Offensive line performed well enough. Defensively, Jalen Smith, 146 tackles. Dr. Floss would be 11 from rookie Paris Hawthorne, who had 14 sacks. That led the way. Vaughn Redman also had 9.5 taco with 8. Geno Atkins with seven interceptions. We have six from Telvin Smith. Six from Darius. Big play slay. Tyre Matthew with four. The Honey Badger. Three for Jalen Smith as well. Force fumbles. Paris Hawthorne. Oh my. What, a, what an animal he is. Another amazing defensive player out of Miami. And you can just. You can think of a lot of them. Ed Reed. Got Ray Lewis. I mean, there are a number. Uh, Darius Slay had a few as well. Safeties, none. Defensive touchdowns, two. Anthony Brown, and of course, the Honey Badger. Yearly awards, Dak got MVP. No Zeke, though. NFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Dak Prescott. Ezekiel Elliott there at number eight. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Aaron Donald. Jalen Smith at number two. Telvin Smith at number three. Paris Hawthorne as a rookie at number six. Big Play Slay, number nine. Because I can't, apparently I just can't call him Darius Slay without mentioning Big Play. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Cedric McDonald, no Cowboys. And Defensive Rookie of the Year, there should be no surprise. Are you kidding me? What? How? How does that happen? Dewan Galvin, fuck off. Dude, where is he? Literally, not up for defense. They weren't rookies. Fuck. 
Okay. I rest my case. I'm I'm fine with what has happened. So we have a bunch of XP pretty much universally across the board. I'm going to spend it on some of these big name players. Um, or big XP players. But other than that, I'm going to let the CPU take care of it. You know, they're just like, what's 10k to Tyron Smith who's a 97 overall? It's not really too much. But Dak, as a quarterback, that's very important. This 23k XP could go a very long ways. XP is super expensive though, so it won't really. Dak's only a 94, which is still pretty good though, to be fair. This is the upgraded team heading into the playoffs though. Most notable upgrades, we'll say with confidence, because why not? Confidence is the grade that you guys can see that makes some of these green with the plus ones and the plus twos instead of just the base, like so we see on Zach Martin, who's a 99, can't go up. Everyone's playing with immense confidence though, so they're, everyone's playing up. Uh, Dak is up to a 96, L. Collins is up to an 88, Ryan Switzer hit to the 80s at uh, 80 overall on the nose. Defensively, Paris Hawthorne in his rookie year is a 90 overall, Vaughn Redman is up to an 88 overall, uh, Jalen Smith up to an 87. I mean, the team is looking pretty nice, cornerbacks are sick. Let's go ahead and advance to the divisional and see who is unluckily matched up against us, and it's going to be the Detroit Lions. I don't think it's going to go well for them. We're 92 overall to their 91, though. I have overestimated this Dallas Cowboy team quite a lot. All right, here we go. Live from AT&T, we have playoff football in Dallas once again, which is, again, something I hope I would never have to say. Or have to say. Um, it's a very close game, 19-9. to yeah, but that is going to be, again, bridged by Detroit as they score again. 21, or excuse me, 29 to 15. Now 29-22, but that should be the game 35-22 as the Dallas Cowboys will ice things here at AT&T Stadium. Dak Prescott, 256 yards and four touchdowns in his first ever, that's not accurate, um, in his first playoff game in this rebuild. That's what I meant to say. CPU can handle the upgrades. They should be fine. Who is the matchup in the conference championship? Uh, show me the Atlanta Falcons. Seattle Seahawks, 12-4 and four against the 14-2 and two Dallas Cowboys. Let's knock them off. All right, here we go. Again at AT&T Stadium. Dallas has to an early 3-0 lead, and they will answer with a field goal. 10-0, now 13-0 after another field goal. Seahawks have yet to score. That could change here at any moment. They still don't. 19 to 7 after they get their first points on the board with a touchdown. 32 to 7 now they answer with a field goal. 35 to 10 will be your final score though. As for the first time since the late 90s or mid 90s, the Dallas Cowboys are going back to the Super Bowl. Again, I hope this doesn't happen in real life. I'm a big Giants fan, but for the sake of the rebuild, I want to be successful, right? So uh, this is kind of what we wanted. Who are we facing in the Super Bowl? Show me the Chiefs. It's going to be the 12-4 and San Diego, I guess, Los Angeles Chargers now. The LA Chargers, 92 overall against 91 overall. Let's go, Dallas. <laughs> it hurts so badly to say that. But come on, let's get this W, let's move on to uh, bigger and better things. And speaking of which, no matter what happens here in this game, tell me who to do next down in the comment section below. It can be any team we're jumping around, as I said in the beginning, so uh, whatever your heart desires in terms of rebuilding of teams, be sure to let me know. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this game. All right, here we go. From Hard Rock Stadium in Miami, 16-0 out into an early lead. The Chargers finally score a touchdown, but missed the extra point. And they are answering quickly. This is a this is a joke. No, it's 23 all. Finish Dallas. 29-23. The Chargers score. They go for two and they get it and they win. Oh my god, what a savage move. I'm not even mad. Did they go for two? Make it and win? Or did we just miss an extra point? I swear to God, if Dan Bailey missed an extra point, I'm going to be furious. I will be absolutely furious if Dan Bailey missed, missed an extra point. Because that happened the first time around I did this. Dan Bailey could not hit a kick to save his life. Dan Bailey straight up missed two extra points. Thanks for watching. 
See you guys later. Fuck Dan Bailey in the comment section. Jesus. See you in the next one. Shit down.